no idea what I'm going to do next for my channel. I mean, I've done a lot of the heavy hitters. I've still got to work my way up to some of the bigger Blitz Kid records. And it, it's been so long since I've gotten something up. I just don't, I don't know. But what is this? The hell is that? You guys seeing this? Seriously, you guys. Seriously seeing this? This is where'd he go? This is some straight up Halloween shit going. Ah! What do you want? The epidemic quarantine days. You're a fucking genius, dude. Oh my god. Please don't kill me. Greetings, fiends. Welcome back. You know, from the Black Death to Ebola, pandemics have caused mass hysteria across the entire world. And Ohio's no different, because here we have the epidemic. Tonight on the Midnight Chamber, we're looking at quarantine days. Man, it's been a minute, but you know, I had to regroup and get my, my, my everything straight, but I come back with you with a, a heater, a real fucking heater, and that's Quarantine Days by the Epidemic. Uh, anyone who's been around definitely has probably heard of this record, especially with Nathan Bain being part of the Roby Midnight and Blitz Kid, the, the Hellfire Romantics, for anyone who actually remembers that little, like, I don't even, side project, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, we'll get into obscure stuff at some point, not like it's all obscure, but I guess. So the epidemic. Born in the bowels of Cincinnati, Ohio, circa 2004, 2005, something like that memory serves correctly by Nathan Bain and Ryan and I to be honest I don't remember who was playing drums for them and Nate didn't elaborate on that uh, but I will tell you who played on the record he doesn't remember. I don't think they ever had a, a real steady drummer which they've got more of a steady drummer now but that's besides the point the band was started 2004, 2005 by Nate and Ryan, and they were like 14 and 15, uh, Nate being the older at 15. They kind of came from, uh, Nate came from a family that was heavily music influenced, musicians and family, uh, older siblings, uh, and family members into everything from, you know, thrash, other kinds of like heavy metal, classic rock, that kind of stuff. And that is a similar story for a lot of musicians where they get into the stuff their parents are into and then older brothers and sisters and stuff like that. And somewhere along the line, they discovered the, the, the burgeoning like horror punk thing. Like in death rock. Because really, those early days, death rock blended so like no one knew what to call it. Was it death rock? Was it something new? Was it, I mean, just a modification of what was already there? Whatever. We've been over that a little bit. But they, they found that and they kind of got really, really into it. 
Um, so, Nate had already been in, like, a thrash band. I mean, he, like, he started off young in some of these things. So, when they discovered the horror punk death rock thing, they kind of now went down the way they wanted to go. So, you know, Nate and Ryan, this is their baby. Once they got the ball rolling, started writing songs, those early days completely and utterly full of every horror punk cliche you could possibly think of. Uh, corpse paint, Halloween decorations, etc., etc. All the cheesy shit that is not refined yet, because let's be real, we keep that stuff around, it just gets more and more refined so it looks spookier and spookier. It's what we love more can. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the origins, but we'll get into a little bit more here in just a second, but let's break and take a look at Quarantine Days. Um, this will include the CD version that originally came out on Robot Monster, the EP that preceded the album, and then also the 10th anniversary. So, we'll be back in just one second. All right, guys. So this is the uh, Human Gourmet EP. And it's just in a basic sleeve. This looks Kinko's copied. Professional enough. And there's the boys when they were like stupid, crazy young. So it was uh, Adam Sievering who was playing drums for them. make out any of that. It says, thanks, group effort, sound studios, friends, families, fans, Jared, King, Wharf, Terry Wright, Denny, Brett Johnson, Sean, Return Henderson, Carrie Flowers, Daryl and Amy, Chris, Lucen, Mikey Weaver, TB Monstrosity, and Argyle Gould. So, and then the, uh, CD here. If you know, this is on a TDK burn disc, but it's one of those nice sticker printed ones. And that's just the 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 uh, single came with three songs: Nightmare City, Human Gourmet, and Blood on the Record Player. Classic epidemic tunes. And then we've got the Quarantine Days. First pressing, Robot Monster. We're about to have some cat interference, but hey, this is homebrew. What can you say? Let's see, Aurora here. She likes the epidemic. So even at this point, they didn't have a, they didn't have a steady drummer, and like I said, I believe Stripes played on the album. Lyrics on the inside. Thanks. And the CD. Nice backdrop right there. CD is fantastic. And then this is the special edition 10th anniversary. I had just found out just by random photos from. Uh, Nothing but a nightmare records out of California. The guys from uh, was it Beneath the Cellars label? They uh, there's a, an alternate cover to this. I don't know if it's the more ma mass market cover, but I might have to try to get my hands on that. 
but this has got all the, the nice the common interest sticker which I have broken you know there this is number 17 of 150 really good heavy cards like card stock there's the center label Gorgeous black splatter vinyl. Or it's not even a splatter. I'm not sure exactly what you call this pattern, but it's really awesome. So there you go. Quarantine days. Here's an insert that I nearly forgot. a lot of thank yous a lot of old pictures of the boys the sweet air filtration sent it like fake send away it's pretty badass it's a gorgeous looking vinyl isn't it like, the, the whole release came out really, really nice. So, let's, uh, let's get into just the nooks and crannies of this record. So, uh, the way Nate writes his music is he, he'll write four, five, six songs all at the same time, and they kind of share a similar theme. Like, just look on Quarantine Days, you can see a lot of similar themes. Like, let's see, Blood on the Record Player, Nightmare City, uh, I think, well, Nightmare City was the very first song they ever wrote, and uh, Blood on the Record Player was also an early track, and so was Human Gourmet. Those kind of were written all at the same time, and they share a very similar theme. And then you've got Drop Dead Gorgeous, Broken Bride, B Movie Baby, Murder at the Drive-In, Vanishing Corpse. You can see the similar themes that are going on here. So, once they started writing, uh, it was really good. Needless to say, they put out the Human Gourmet EP, which has three songs on it. Human Gourmet, Blood on the Record Player, and Nightmare City. Which, um, I don't even know if this is an unpopular opinion, because I honestly haven't heard any other, other opinions. The version of Nightmare City on this EP is just, in my opinion, nukes the album version. They're both really good, but man, that demo version is smoking. I remember seeing the, I was at the Epidemic's first three shows, because they always played with Blitzkid. Uh, they, uh, they met Blitzkid really early on. Um, Ryan's brother's friend, you know, twice removed, um, he lived pretty close to Bluefield, knew the guys, and the connection was made, and, okay, if this tells you how long ago it was, Blitzkid used to drive into town, pick Nate and Ryan up from school, and hang out with them all day long, like, instant connection. I remember that the first time I saw them. Uh, I remember I walked up to Nate when it was all said and done. I mean, he was probably maybe 16 at the time. Because I don't, yeah, he might have been still 15 at the time. Either way, I walked up to him and I said, Now, son, you are not allowed to play with the altar anymore. Seriously. Because, he, like, at, a, at 15, his vocals were so fucking good. It blew my mind. I mean, they were a tight band and really good songwriters, so, you know, I had to, you know, bust his chops just a little bit, um, and we were quick friends, um, and that friendship remains to this day. I don't see a lot of the Cincinnati crew as much as I like, but whatever, you know, it's how time is, we should all like each other more. Um, so, 
they they get this EP out, everything is going in the right direction, but then, you know, more shows happen, end of high school comes. Ryan leaves for the Navy, which I actually, I remember this happening, because um, I believe I was at the last show that Ryan played with them. He went off to the Navy, and th- here's the parts that I didn't know, that he really wanted Nate to continue with the band and get that, that full length out. So, he, one of his, na- his Navy checks actually paid for the recording of the record, which is pretty cool. And also, Blitzkid steps up and fills in a lot of like parts. Stripes played drums on the record, if I remember correctly. Um, Goolsby's all over it. Tracy's all over it. Everybody's all over this record. Like The, the Epidemic were in the thick of it. They got the, the album recorded. So then, you know, one thing leads to another. You gotta get it put out somehow. So the connection there is Travis Boyle, who used to be a, I believe, a Bluefield guy. Uh, he moved up to Seattle, met another guy, and they started a record label that we all know called Robot Monster. Robot Monster put out. And you could probably argue that Quarantine Days is maybe the most uh, famous release that was out on Robot Monster. I'm not 100% sure on everything they actually released, but I know they they released Church of Centers and Rival Skulls, maybe something, a couple other things. I didn't look this up before the, the video, so I'm just going off of memory here, but I think Quarantine Days might be the, the biggest thing they, they released, but it's a fantastic record. Um, and of course, since Travis is from Bluefield, he knew Goolsby. Goolsby obviously was tight with the epidemic. That was how that connection was set up, and that's how the record deal came down. And bada bing, bada boom, you've got Quarantine Days out. Now, the, the initial release of this came with a patch, a sticker, a poster, and a CD. That CD. And I have the poster, the patch, and the sticker buried away in my vaults. They are all cool, but the poster is pretty much just the album cover, and so is the patch and the sticker. You're not like missing a whole bunch with that particular uh, package. So they released that, and then it wasn't... Uh, I digress. Uh, well, I forget. Go figure. I'm scatterbrained. Uh, Mike, the uh, second guitarist of the Epidemic, who's still in the Epidemic. I believe Ryan is back. And uh, Mike kind of helped pick up the uh, everything with the band. But right after quarantine days, maybe not, maybe a year after the band, uh, they kind of went on a hiatus. Mike works in TV still to this day down in Cincinnati, and he's got a, a pretty good career, and then Ryan was off in the Navy, so, and right at that exact time, which would have been just prior to Blitzkid's apparitional, it was right around that time, as we all know, that Tracy was getting ready to leave the band, and will be filling. So, the opportunity came up for Nate to join Blitzkid, which we all know that did happen. He did some tours with them. So, he, like, the epidemic went on hiatus, and he popped in, fil- started filling in uh, guitars for Blitzkid. Then, uh, as we know, in 2012, Blitzkid came to an end, and by that point, uh, Nate was already out of the band and he was doing other things. So then we fast forward because there was a, he he was in like Pharaohs. He was in he had a uh, kind of dope like trip hoppy weird project. That the name of the band is slipping my name right now. Yeah, it's slipping my own. I'll remember it later. But they started their their uh, 
their own imprint, which is uh, Paranoia House Records, or Paranoia House Music. So under the radar, and I'm still a little livid about this because I didn't even know it came out until the infamous Mikey Weaver, which Mikey Weaver is the one who bought me this at their, their very first show because he was friends with them, and he gave it to me, and I'm so glad he did. But Weaver texts me one day and tells me, dude, the Epidemic just released their second record. And I went, I haven't heard anything about this. What the hell? So I text Nate. And what happened was they finished up the record. I, Ryan was back. So Ryan, Mike, and Nate finished the record with Troy, the, or as you all know him, Ray M. from Blitzkid. Troy came up and finished the drums on the record so they released Body Heat kind of under the radar now I don't normally like talking about a second record in the first album like retrospective but it plays into where the 10th anniversary vinyl came to be that record uh, lo and behold it slid into the hands of a guy in Florida who runs Uncommon Interests. It's a memorabilia company, and he was all he apparently was a huge Epidemic fan already from back in the day. And uh, it's funny how things work out like that. But he wanted to like get this record, like he wanted to do something right for quarantine days because he loved the record. So he helps put out 150 press of this vinyl. And, you know, uh, that is, that's how that happened. And it is, it's funny because uh, prior to the body heat getting finished, Nate had been playing in the Rogan Midnight, the early edition of the Rogan Midnight. Now there's like 50 members of that band. Uh, but he had been playing guitar for that. And I guess this was when Stripes was still in the Rogue Midnight too. Uh, and Stripes and Goolsby were on Nate's butt to get the band back up on its feet. Which, you know, if your friends can't talk you into, you know, into motivating you into doing what you love, then who can? And it seems to have worked. They got on his butt and all of this transpired and now we've got the 10th anniversary final they are working on another album right now and it would be really fantastic if we had more than a hundred copies of the body thief floating around physically um, maybe the guy at uncommon interests could press up the body thief on vinyl I don't know maybe some other labels step up we'll see what happens when they get this new record finished but, uh, so that's kind of like the ins and outs of history of the album. And as for a mini review of this, just my, my thoughts on the record, well, for one, I adore the damn thing. I mean, we're talking, th this is local shit for me, and it's really good. I, it used to be, like, I got used to, so, this, this, like, so many shows that were Blitz Kid, the Epidemic, CK5, Jackalopes, Reanimated. We used to have some shit going on around here for real. But this this album is nothing but pure love. Uh, it's really good. My favorite songs on it, probably Nightmare City, because it's one of the first ones I ever heard. Um, B Movie Baby, Love on a Record Player, a ba a Corpses Banish. Or as corpses vanish, great. No, I can speak. I swear. Really good, really good album though, all around. So you can get it digitally. Um, you might be able to find a few copies here on around on Discogs. Uh, there, I think the vinyl sold out. I know the CDs are probably sold out. You might be able to find a few. Uh, digital's gonna be the way you have to go with a lot of this. Um, good luck on finding that human gourmet like CD EP. Like I, outside of the people I know who have it, I have not seen anymore. So 
Yeah, the epidemic. Quarantine days. Yeah, the epidemic. Quarantine days. You need to get that. Listen to it. <laughs> like, go get on Bandcamp and download that shit. Um, if you can. I'm pretty sure it's on Bandcamp. If not, YouTube, I guess? I don't know. We'll see what happens as time goes on. Another thing I need to mention before we're completely done is the, the 10th anniversary vinyl edition. The first three copies came with a, fr the, a freaking gas mask, and I obviously jumped on that shit way early. I wasn't expecting that, but I got one of the gas masks, which is pretty neat. So that, that's a, a badass piece of memorabilia right there. But yeah, the epidemic. Ugh. Quarantine days. Yeah, fuck yeah.